Hey guys, Wet Movie one back here again with another Blu-ray DVD update video for you guys today. It's been about two weeks or so since my last one. Got a lot of good stuff here to talk to you guys about today. A little bit later on in this video, my mom should be popping in with her guest reviews. So guys, let's get started with it here. Uh, the first one up is from Paramount, and that is the special collector's edition here of Pain and Gain on Blu-ray. And I know you guys are probably say, asking yourselves, Man, that movie already came out on Blu-ray a couple months ago. But this is the special collector's edition version with over an hour of behind the scenes with Michael Bay talking about, you know, his experience on the film, interviews with The Rock, Mark Wahlberg, Tony Shalhoub, everyone from the cast, really in-depth uh, behind the scenes, which I found super entertaining on here. And uh, the, one of the cool things about this Blu-ray here, it's my very first Blu-ray. It has a slipcover, but it's also in a a red Blu-ray case, which I think is kind of super cool. It's like a little something a little different, you know what I mean, to change things up. But uh, if you guys don't know what Pain and Gain is, me and Andrew saw it this past summer. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. It's a Michael Bay film that's based on a true story about these three bodybuilders that are, that are sort of kind of down on their luck, and they decide uh, to rob and extort all this money uh, from one of their clients that they, that they help at their gym. And that guy's played by Tony Shalhoub, and it's whatever, you know, it's pretty much them trying to do whatever they can to get all their money they can from Tony Shalhoub's character, and it's all the craziness that ensues from there. But uh, the shining star of this movie to me is The Rock, just, you know, going super crazy with it, being super serious, super funny, and just super over the top in this film. But ever since he's, you know, you know stepped his foot into movies, like, you know, when he did the, what's it called, The Scorpion King back in, like, 99, 2000, I didn't really like that film, but he was kind of... Kind of cool in it and I'm really happy to see him progress even more and more in film but if you guys are a fan of pain and gain definitely check this one out it has of course the Michael Bay slow motion shots like he always does in all of his movies and things it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a fun little popcorn flick uh, next up from Universal is two guns here on blu-ray DVD combo pack uh, starring Mark Wahlberg again and uh, Denzel Washington it's, pr it's pretty much about these two guys that rob this bank in this small town and uh, come to find out when they rob this bank uh, they're not just robbing a bank, they're robbing like a, a drug kingpin and uh, all the trouble ensues from there of them trying to get away you know, with the money and these people after them. There's a lot more going on uh, in this film but I just don't want to ruin it for you, you know what I mean? Like, even if you watch the trailer to this film, it kind of ruins a little bit of a twist that happens in this film about, about the two main characters. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to say anything else about it, but, like, they have a really good supporting cast in this film by uh, Edward James Olmos, who you guys all know from American Me, and uh, Bill Paxton, you know, he's, like, one of the crazy guys after... after uh, Denzel Washington and Mark Wahlberg in the film. It, it's, it's a fun popcorn flick. It's nothing to take, you know, too super serious or anything like that. It's one of those ones you would rent and watch on the, you know, on the weekend with, like, your friends and family or something and just have a good time with it, you know. Definitely give this one a watch. It is worth watching. You know, Denzel Washington, even if he's not, like, looking like he's trying in a movie, he's still really, really good. You know what I mean? Like, even at his worst, he's still, like, better than half the people that are in movies today, you know? But uh, that's two guns here on Blu-ray. I would have to say a 7 out of 10 for me on this one. Uh, give it a chance. Uh, but next up over here from Warner Brothers is The Getaway here on Blu-ray starring Selena Gomez and Ethan Hawke. Um, I really didn't know what to think about this movie because I didn't see it in the theaters or anything. Um, I really like Ethan Hawke. He's in two of my favorite films of all time, which is, you know, uh, Reality Bites and a movie called Tape that came out a long time ago that takes place pretty much entirely in a hotel room. But uh, in this film, it's pretty much Ethan Hawke's character at the beginning of the movie finds out his wife got kidnapped and this one guy that kidnapped his wife is making him do all these tasks in this car for him, like driving around the city, crashing into things like, here, drive this way, crash into this, you know, crash into as much things as you can. I just wish there was a little bit more at the beginning of the film to make us care about Ethan Hawke and his wife and what happened, you know, what happened. It's just like at the beginning of the, right when the movie starts, it starts off with, you know, Ethan Hawke in the car driving already. You know what I mean? Like five seconds of flashback of his wife getting kidnapped. You know what I mean? Like, you need a little bit of, like, you know, make a, you know, like, first two minutes of the movie. Like, have them, like, cooking dinner for each other. And, like, having this little moment at the dinner table. And then, boom, have the bad guys come in and, like, take them. Like, make us care about what's going on first in the film, you know? And Selena Gomez is just a person that pops in and pops in, like, 20 minutes into the film with a gun to Ethan Hawke's head saying, Hey, give me my car, asshole! Like, you know, because Ethan Hawke had to steal a car that the bad guy told him to steal. And she, it, was, it was her car, so she was trying to get her car 
car back and she gets thrown into the whole mess of what's going on with Ethan Hawke and trying to find his wife. It was just, it was kind of a, kind of a sloppy film. Uh, it, it, I, I sat through it, but it just wasn't enough substance in it for me to recommend it to you guys, you know? But that's the getaway here on Blu-ray. Uh, but next up is a great film, is uh, Argo the, on Blu-ray, the extended edition. This is that new edition that uh, Warner Brothers put out that you come, it comes with like a collectible booklet of like, you know, photos from the film. Uh, you also get a ID tag, a replacement ID badge with Ben Affleck's picture on it that he had, that he had to use in the film. And, uh, you get two discs in here. You get the extended edition and the theatrical edition. The theatrical edition of the film is nine minutes longer than the theatrical or whatever. Did I, did I just repeat myself? I don't know, but the extended edition is nine minutes longer. And, uh, you know, it's pretty much about these uh, uh, American uh, citizens that are in Iran at the American embassy when the em American embassy got taken over by some, like, what, terrorists or missionaries or whatever, and they escape before these missionaries capture them and they're stuck in Iran trying to figure out how the hell they're going to get out of Iran and Ben Affleck's character is you know and his and his team are trying to figure out what are they going to do to help them get out you know what I mean instead of before they get captured and what they decide to do is you know uh make up this fake movie crew and to go down to Iran to scout out locations to, for this like fake film which is called Argo and uh, while they're down there, they're trying to find these people, you know. It was just a really engross uh, engrossing film. And I was really happy that it won the Best Picture last year at the Academy Awards. Ben Affleck really did deserve it in this one. But uh, Argo, the extended edition, definitely give this one a watch. You get a slew of extra uh, behind the scenes and, like, making ofs and, you know, just, like, documents about what really happened in Iran in 1979. But that's Argo, the extended edition here on Blu-ray. Alright guys, next up is Impractical Jokers here, the first season on DVD. One of those funny hidden camera shows that was on True TV. Uh, it's pretty much about these four friends that compete in challenges to embarrass one another. Like uh, going to a buffet and um, seeing who can get the most food off random people's plates and whoever has the most weight at the end of each challenge, you know, at the end of the challenge wins that particular challenge. And at the end of each episode, whoever lost the most of the challenges during that episode has to do something really embarrassing uh, at the end of each episode. I just found it to be a really funny hidden camera show. Um, it's it's kind of like in the vein of like can candid camera a little bit, and just a lot of really embarrassing situations that they put these they, 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 these guys put their friends uh, you know into like walking up to random people on the street and like you know shaking their butt on them and things like that. But if you guys like love hidden camera shows with like people playing pranks on random people on the streets, definitely check out Impractical Jokers on DVD. I marathon this show like the first disc one night and the second disc the, the night after. Totally, totally funny. I really, really dug this show. Excuse me, Brendan. Excuse me. Hi. It's just me again. I'm stopping by to show you my update. And I have a handful this time. <laughs> At least for me. Um, first up, as Brendan always says, is Prince Avalanche from Magnolia. It stars Paul Rudd and Emile Hirsch. Um, wasn't what I expected. The story is Basically, these two guys spend the summer um, of 1988, apparently, painting those yellow lines in a back, you know, country road. And you're thinking, uh, okay, how are you going to make, an, uh, you know, an interesting movie about that? But it, it was. Um, and, and it showed, you know, kind of how they painted the lines and the machines they had. And the guy would stop by from the he wasn't a supervisor or anything but he'd stop by and you know just bring him stuff to drink or say hello who was part of some other crew you know somewhere else down the road and it's basically a relationship movie but you know it was between you know Paul Rudd and Emile Hirsch who plays uh, Paul Rudd's girlfriend's brother and you never see the girlfriend, but it's just the relationship these two form that summer painting, you know, those yellow lines down the middle of an old backcountry road. I wasn't impressed particularly. I mean, I liked the two actors. They were great. But I, I, it's kind of a, what I, you know, call an artsy movie. And sometimes I personally have a hard time with those. It wasn't exactly what I expected, but it was interesting. 
you know, you might want to take a look at it. Uh, let's see, next up, oh, this is with Greg Kinnear and Jennifer Conley called Stuck in Love. I like it. You know, it's another one of your romantic comedies. And I always like Greg Kinnear because he just has sort of a, I don't know, an on-camera persona I really like. And it's, again, a relationship movie, you know, about uh, first love and second chances. Uh, Greg Kinnear plays a writer, and both his children, who are still, you know, basically students in school, are writers also. And it's about how they agitate each other or try to inspire each other. And just, you know, your old kind of run-of-the-mill, uh, what do you call it, um, romance kind of comedy. It was cute. I liked it. I really did. It's a cute thing just to look and see and kind of light and airy. So pick it up if you'd like to. Uh, then, <laughs> this is, to me is very strange. It's called Violet and Daisy, which sounds harmless, right? Title. Well, it's about two young girls who happen to be hit girls, you know, like hit men, but they're hit girls, and they go out on, you know, assignments to, you know, off people, as it were, and it shows them, you know, going on one or two assignments, and it shows them doing their thing, and then they get assigned uh, a job uh, trying to off James Gandolfini. <laughs> well, that just takes a turn uh, it just takes a real turn. In other words, this guy really wants to go, and he's like, well, come on and do it if you're going to do it already. And they're like, well, wait a second. <laughs> and it's sort of the relationship they establish with his character in the movie. And again, it's another one of, I call him artsy-fartsy, but it's not any disrespect, but it's, again, another type of artsy movie that uh, may be more to it than I could figure out. Because, I, I mean, I liked it, but it's still, at the end, you kind of go, uh, okay. You know, the payoff wasn't enough for me, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. But it's interesting. It certainly is. All right. And last up, I love this. I love this. And, of course, you know me and my TV stuff. <clears throat> this really is TV. Here you go. Twilight Zone, the complete series. Now, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm old enough to remember sitting, having to sit in front of my TV set that I had to get up and turn on and turn channels. There were no remotes, okay? And I think it was every Saturday night, and I forget exactly what time, but every Saturday night you had to be in front of that TV at, I think, 8.30 or whatever it was, and watch Twilight Zone with Rod Serling. Now, um, I looked at different discs, and in the first um, series, I guess you would call it, I'm looking at some of the stories, and I'm like, oh boy, I never saw any of these at all. And it's not, and the setup with the stories was not what I remembered. And then luckily, when I went further on, I went, oh yeah, 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 here it is, you know, neener, 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 the Twilight Zone, you know, and back to stuff that I remember. But I really liked uh, the stuff from the earlier version that apparently I've never seen in the first season because neener, 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 neener. And this guy was all alone in a town. And there was nobody there. But a phone would ring. And lights would go on. And he just got crazier and crazier. Because there was no one in the town. So who was doing this? And the camera backs slowly away. And he's in an isolation chamber. With, you know, uh, he's in a lab. In a study with the army. And he's going, and the, t you know, the tag on this thing is, hmm. Yes, and he was only in isolation for two weeks. Imagine what it'd be like if he went to the moon. <laughs> so that's how early that one is, because that came out, obviously, you know, before man stepped, set foot on the moon. So it was pretty cool. I liked it. So <clears throat> any of you Twilight fans... Uh, not Twilight, what am I saying? Those, that's another thing. The Twilight Zone fans... Pick this up, you'll love it. It'll bring back great memories. It's got great cast in there. It was, oh, I want to go watch some more. Goodbye.
Alright guys, next up from Sony is Mortal Instruments City of Bones here on Blu-ray. The story is pretty much about this girl named Claire. She's an ordinary teenager. She's doing what teenagers do, going out with friends. Until one night, she starts seeing these symbols appear to her. Like this little thing on the front cover here. And she's the only one that can see them. Her friends are thinking she's kind of crazy. What do you see? I don't see it. And then she starts seeing these symbols more and more like in a room appearing. Going, She's like, what's going on here? But yet her parents have this deep dark secret that they're, uh, they're thinking about telling her about their, her family. And come, come to find out that her family are shadow, her family are shadow hunters. And uh, which are people that, you know, kill demons and witches. Not witches, but like demons, werewolves and vampires and things like that. And it's just, you know, her adventure of trying to f discover who she is and what she is because at the beginning of this film uh, her mother uh, gets killed or, ta or taken away or whatever and it's her trying to find where her mother is so she can find the true secret of what you know what what she's feeling and what you know she's, she's slowly starting to remember about her about her young age um, this movie was just okay it kind of has that uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer vibe to it with a mix with Twilight. Even though I've only really seen like 20 minutes of the first Twilight movie, but I've seen like bits and pieces because my sister would watch them in the house every once in a while. Eh, it was just one of it was just one of those eh, you know, kind of movies. But I know if you guys are like into Twilight and move mo movies like that, you'll probably dig it. There are some cool sequences in here, like Buffy style stuff with vampires and werewolves going on and what you know them trying to slay them and things like that. It was kind of cool the action stuff. But then they then they get, then they get into some weird sappy stuff with you know Claire and this uh, you know the guy that's trying to teach her and help her figure out where she's where she came from and there's this whole thing where they're like in this garden and they're having this little moment with this lovely music and then the rain comes down and then they're just like oh mm, like you know total twilight kind of vibe to it you know but uh if you guys are into movies you know like that definitely give it a watch but to me meh, you know <laughs> you know mortal instruments city of bones meh. Uh, next up right here from Comedy Central is Bill Cosby, Far From Finished. This is his first stand-up comedy special in over 30 years. Um, I've been a big fan of Bill Cosby ever since like his Cosby show. And uh, I forgot what that one show was called. Not Fat Albert. I like Fat Albert. But there's one that has to do with like pen drawings and things I really liked. And my favorite special he ever did was Bill Cosby himself. When he's like talking about going to the dentist and things like that. But in this one he's talk he talks about relationships and how... Uh, how different it was from having a girlfriend and then how he changed it to his, to, to be his wife and just how like, the dynamic between the two kind of shifted a little bit and how he's kind of like being told what to do and stuff like that it's, it's really really funny um it's definitely not one of his best specials ever but he, you know he's getting up there in age and he i just think it's really cool that he's still out there you know you know doing his craft you know what i mean because this is the man the myth the legend man bill cosby uh one of the only comics that i know that i love that works clean, that doesn't use any foul language or anything like that. I, I absolutely love the man. There's something about him that really comforts me. You know what I mean? Like his voice, just the way he, you know, just the way he is. It's like the Cosby Show. He's like the, you know, the best dad ever on TV, you know? But uh, on this on this Blu-ray here, you get an interview on here with Bill Cosby, being interviewed by Robert Townsend uh, about his career and life and stuff like that, which was really interesting. And of course, the behind the scenes uh, making of, special, of, of the special. Um, definitely give it a chance if you guys love Bill Cosby and his stand-up comedy specials. Really, really worth watching. Uh, next up right here from Anchor Bay is All Is Bright here on Blu-ray, starring Paul Rudd and Paul Giamatti. Uh, Paul, in this movie, Paul Giamatti plays this ex-con that's uh, being let out of prison after being there for so many years. And he's coming to go visit his wife and kid that he hasn't seen in all this time. But come to find out, his wife has told his kid that he died, and his wife doesn't really want anything to do with him anymore. So now he's out of jail, has nowhere to go, no job, no money, no nothing. And the only thing that he can do is uh, try to find random work with Paul Rudd's character that's selling Christmas trees on a random, you know, street corner. But, you know, come to find out Paul Rudd is uh, his, you know, uh, Paul Giamatti's uh, new boyfriend or, or husband or whatever. And just the dynamic between the two and the bickering that goes on between the two while they're trying to make money by selling Christmas trees on a random street corner, you know. Um, I found this one to be really a funny 
dark comedy film that you can watch during Christmas time. I, I, I really fell in love with it. I really didn't know what to expect going into this. And uh, I was really pleasantly surprised by the look and the feel of the film. It was like really kind of gritty, but like really shot very, very well. Um, if you guys get a chance to see this All is Bright, definitely give it a shot. Really, really highly recommend this one, guys. Uh, next up right here from Magnolia is uh, Big Star, Nothing Can Hurt Me on Blu-ray, a documentary about the band themselves, Big Star. Uh, this is Big Star was a band back in the 70s that had a couple of like semi-hits, but they never really struck it big. They never went to that next level of fame. You know what I mean? Like They didn't really go that far. They were really popular in Memphis because that's where they grew up and started doing their music. Uh, they put out three albums. And then the band kind of, you know, as the, the albums were coming out, they kind of broke apart and stuff like that. But they, they did some really great music back in that time. Um, I forgot some of, the name, some of the names of the songs that I love, but I know there's one or two of them that uh, were in my, one of my favorite movies of all time, um, Empire Records. And, uh, I, you know, because when, when it comes to music for me in movies, um, I don't really remember band names or, like, uh, who wrote that, who sung that. It's always about, like, I'm, I hear something like, I don't want to miss a thing, you know, like the Aerosmith thing or whatever. But for the longest time, it was just like, that's the song from Armageddon, baby. Like, that, that's the kind of person I am. Like, I always have a hard time remembering people's, you know, who wrote, who sang the songs and things. But, but listening, watching this and listening to some of the music they play, I'm like, holy crap, this from this movie? This song was from that movie? You know? But it's a really in-depth documentary about these guys and and how they formed their band and how they all kind of broke up and what happened to them and how they had a resurgence in the 90s. If you guys know anything about Big Star, if you're a fan of their music, definitely get this documentary. You'll learn a lot more about them that you probably didn't know before. But that's uh, Big Star, Nothing Can Hurt Me on Blu-ray. Really, really liked it. I, I really love watching documentaries, especially this one right here called Blackfish. Uh, here on Blu-ray about this these you know killer whales that uh, SeaWorld goes out to like the into the ocean and like grabs these whales out of the ocean and throws them into their theme parks and you know just expects them to put on a show for people you know what I mean like the, they have trainers you know if you guys ever go to SeaWorld you can see the SeaWorld show like Shamu show or whatever and um, you know how like there's like the trainers that get into the water with the, the with the whales and like do these spins and get shot out of the water but this document it really takes you in deep to see what really happens at SeaWorld and how you know, there were some people that actually died at SeaWorld because of this one whale named Tillicum that just went kind of apeshit crazy and wanted to, you know, have something to eat, you know what I mean? Or just like, went crazy because he was just tired of being cooped up there so damn long, you know? It's just, it's just a really super entertaining documentary. I was really, really like invested in this film watching this thing going, Oh my God, you know what I mean? Because I used to go to SeaWorld as a kid with my grandparents, or my, mostly my grandpa back in the day. And I used to love those shows, you know what I mean? And I'm sure I saw the whale that, you know, k you know killed a couple of people, Tillicum or whatever. And you get to see the progression of Tillicum, like where, you know, how he got pulled out of the ocean and how he went to this weird little, like, you know, side, like, you know, uh, show park or whatever it was. And then, then got trans transported to uh, SeaWorld. And it's all like the, the crap that the, that one whale went through until he got to SeaWorld and then started going crazy and things. It, it's just a really f freaky documentary. It's one of those ones definitely check out. And uh, it'll make you not want to go to SeaWorld anymore, you know? <laughs> but uh, that's Blackfish on Blu-ray. Really, really highly, highly entertaining. Well, guys, that's all I have to show you guys today for this Blu-ray DVD update video for you guys today. Please hit that like button if you guys like this video. Drop a comment in the description box and recommend me uh, a good documentary film. Because re I'm really into those, you know what I mean? I like the, the, the one called Crumb and uh, American Movie and Blackfish and stuff like that. Recommend me some cool documentary films that you think I might like. Alright, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys all next time.